Hey, welcome back. Traditional solutions such as email encryption and file permissions often lack the necessary enforcement tools that apply uniform policies to prevent information leakage. In this episode, we're going to learn about what is information rights management or IRM. My name is Sushant Satish and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 certified Security Administrator Associate certification course. After this episode, you should be able to describe the different Microsoft 365 encryption options, describe how IRM can be used in Exchange and configure IRM protection for Exchange mails and explain how IRM can be used in SharePoint and apply IRM protection to SharePoint documents and describe the differences between IRM protection and AIP classification. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's start with understanding Microsoft 365 encryption options. Encryption by itself doesn't prevent content interception. Encryption is part of a larger information protection strategy for your organization. By using encryption, you help ensure that only authorized parties can use the encrypted data. Microsoft 365 offers a variety of different encryption services and features with a basic differentiation between data at rest and data in transit. So let me explain you these two concepts in detail. First, let's understand what is data at rest. Examples of data at rest include files that have been uploaded to SharePoint library, project online data, documents that have been uploaded in a Microsoft Teams meeting, email messages, and attachments that stored in folders in your Microsoft 365 mailbox and files uploaded to OneDrive for business as well. So what is data in transit? Examples of data in transit include mail messages that are in the process of being delivered or conversations that are taking place in an online meeting. In Microsoft 365, data is in transit whenever a user device is communicating with a Microsoft 365 server or when a Microsoft 365 server is communicating with another server. Let's understand what are the options available for encryption for data in transit. Microsoft 365 provides data protection and security controls that allow you to protect sensitive data from accidental or malicious exposure. These controls help you adhere to compliance requirement, give access to services and content to individuals in your organization, and encrypt data in your Microsoft 365 tenant. Microsoft 365 provides three different encryption options for messages, and document encryption. The first one is information rights management or IRM. The second is secure multi-purpose internet mail extension or S slash MIME. And the third one is Office 365 message encryption. And we will see all these three in detail in the coming slides. First, let's understand the information rights management or rights management in Exchange. With IRM features in Exchange, your organization and users can control the permission that recipients have for email. IRM can allow or restrict recipients' actions such as forwarding a message to another recipient, printing a message or attachment, or extracting message or attachment content by copying and pasting. IRM protection can be applied by users in Outlook and Outlook on Web, or it can be based on your organization's message policies and applied using transport protection rules or outlook protection rules. IRM in exchange helps prevent information leakage by offering so many features. Let's go through some of these features. You can use IRM to prevent an authorized recipient of IRM protected content from forwarding, modifying, printing, faxing, saving, or cutting and pasting the content. The second feature is you can protect supported attachment file formats with the same level of protection as the message. And another feature is you can prevent IRM protected content from being copied using the snipping tool in Windows. So what are the limitations of this IRM in Exchange? You can't limit the third-party screen capture programs or photographing IRM protected content that's displayed on the screen and users remembering or manually transcribing the information. By default, an exchange organization is enabled for IRM. 
But to apply IRM prediction messages, you need to use one of these methods, which I'm going to talk about right now. The first one is so users can IRM predict messages in Outlook by using AD RMS rights policy template that are available to them. This processes uses the IRM functionality in Outlook, not Exchange. Next one is manually by users in Outlook on the web. When an administrator enables IRM in Outlook on web, which is formerly known as Outlook web app, users can IRM protect messages that they send and view IRM protected messages that they receive as well. The third one is manually by users in Exchange Active Sync. When an administrator enables IRM in Exchange Active Sync, users can view, reply to, forward, and create IRM protected messages on an Active Sync mobile devices. Another method is automatically in Outlook. Administrators can create Outlook protection rules to automatically IRM protect messages. And Outlook protection rules are automatically deployed to Outlook clients and IRM protection is applied by Outlook when the user is composing a message. And finally, automatically on mailbox servers as well. So administrators can create mail flow rules to automatically IRM protect messages that match specified condition. Let's look at rights management in SharePoint. In SharePoint, IRM enables administrators and content creators to limit the actions that users can take on files that are stored in document libraries. Once IRM has been enabled, site collection administrators can configure individual document libraries to use IRM to protect documents. IRM encrypts the files and limits the set of users and programs that can decrypt these files. And IRM can also limit the rights of the users who can read files so that they can now take actions such as printing copies of the files or copying text from them. So what are the ways IRM in SharePoint helps you protect and restrict content? The first one is you can prevent an unauthorized viewer from copying, modifying, printing, faxing and copying and pasting the content for unauthorized use. Similarly, you can prevent an unauthorized viewer from copying the content by using the print screen feature in the Microsoft Windows. You can restrict access to content to a specified period of time after which users must confirm their credentials and download the content again. Another way you can protect is you can enforce corporate policies that govern the use and dissemination of contents within your organization. And finally, you can block and it blocks the uploads of files with content that cannot be protected by IRM as well. Let's understand how can you apply IRM protection in SharePoint. The type of restrictions that can be applied to a file when it is downloaded from a list or library are based on the individual user's permission on the site that contains the file. Let's discuss the permission options. The first permission option is manage permission and manage website. Let's assume the user have permissions to manage permission and manage website. So this IRM permission gives you full control. And this permission generally allows a user to read, edit, copy, save, and modify permission of rights management content. Second permission level is edit item, manage list, and add and customize pages. In this option, IRM provide you with option to edit, copy, and save. And the user can print a file only if the allow user to print document checkbox is selected on the IRM settings page for the list or library. Another permission is view items. So if a user have view items permission, what can a user do? With IRM, that user can read the document but cannot copy or modify its content. And the last permission level is other. In this option, no other permissions correspond directly to IRM permissions. That concludes the lesson on IRM. In the next episode, we're going to learn about Secure Multi-Purpose Internet Mail Extension or S-MIME. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.